Hello, I'm Jeanette Lowe, Director of Policy Research at Strategus. At Strategus, we partner with Baird to bring our market strategy expertise to financial advisors serving Baird's private wealth clients. Our policy research team focuses on the policy changes happening in Washington, D.C., and the impact that those changes will have on the financial markets. The focus in Washington right now is on the $1.9 trillion stimulus package that is working its way through Congress. The bill will be taken up by the Senate this week. There could be some changes still made to the process. One of the changes we've seen so far is there has been a reduction in the eligibility for the tax rebates. So they will phase out for individuals making $80,000 rather than $100,000. The Senate will have a Votorama session, which is essentially a session which allows senators to offer unlimited amendments to the legislation. And that is where we could see some additional changes. Ultimately, though, we expect the, nearly the entire package to pass. So it would be nearly $1.9 trillion in size. And of that stimulus, $1.2 trillion will be distributed in the next six months. So it will have a large impact on the US economy. Recall the $900 billion stimulus package that passed in December. That bill included $160 billion in rebate checks. And the US uh, Treasury was able to distribute those checks, or at least 130 billion of them, in two, the first two weeks of January. Then we saw retail sales increase 5% in January and GDP estimates for the first quarter rise to nearly 10%. This time around, we are talking about more than $400 billion in rebate checks, which would be coming out as vaccinations against COVID-19 ramp up, as the weather warms, and as local economies continue to reopen. There's a great deal of pent-up demand as this money comes out and as consumers are able to engage in activities that they have not been able to over the past year. And therefore, we are expecting two quarters of blockbuster economic growth. Overall, we are going to do more fiscal stimulus this year than we did last year. If you think back to last year, we had a 15% unemployment rate when the CARES Act was enacted. And this time around, we have a 6.3% unemployment rate and the economy is starting to reopen rather than shut down. And we still have substantial fiscal stimulus coming down the pike. This is important context as the Biden administration and Congress move to the next fiscal package which would be an infrastructure climate change bill. Democrats would like to take that bill up immediately after the current stimulus bill is completed. As the economy strengthens, however, and as interest rates rise, and as we look to raise the US debt ceiling in July, it will be more difficult to justify trillion dollars of more spending, though Democrats would like to go big. If Democrats decide to compromise with Republicans on a bipartisan bill, it would have to be smaller and Republicans will not support tax increases to offset that spending. If Democrats want to go bigger, they will have to go it alone, which means they will have to do it through the budget reconciliation process. That is the process that they are using for the current stimulus bill and it allows them to pass a measure with just 51 votes in the Senate. However, there are restrictions to using reconciliation and there are two infrastructure provisions that were included in the current stimulus bill that actually had to be cut out of it because they did not meet the reconciliation instructions. That signals that it's going to be more difficult for Democrats to get all of the provisions that they would like into an infrastructure bill done through reconciliation. They would also have to offset the cost of that infrastructure bill through a reconciliation provision, which is where we could see tax increases come into play. The tax changes most likely to be included in that package are raising the corporate rate to 25%, which will also trigger a higher rate in foreign source revenue of multinationals, raising the highest income individual tax rate from 37 to 39.6%, lowering the value of tax income tax deductions for high income earners to 28%, and reinstating the state and local tax deduction up to 28%. We could also see an increase in the capital gains and dividends tax rate to somewhere in the range of 25 to 28%. They're also discussing estate tax changes, but there are a number of moderate Democrats who are likely to oppose those changes. Perhaps at best, we could see an increase in the rate of the estate tax, but the legislative math does not make that a given. Ultimately, we expect the infrastructure climate change package to be more difficult to pass than the current stimulus bill 
and Democrats will have to decide whether they want to pursue a bipartisan measure or a reconciliation, re reconciliation package that'll be based on the state of the economy and the political will for more fiscal spending, particularly if interest rates are rising. It could be a smaller infrastructure bill or a short-term one, but the risk of tax increases rises if Democrats choose to pursue it on a party-line vote rather than through the budget reconciliation process. 